Janet and I were in Austria. We came across a set of stairs very similar to these, and it all came to me how these stairs work. Come on through, John. Now, it's very important that when you start at the bottom, you start with your left foot first. Left, right, left, right. Makes total wow. sense now, doesn't it, mate? I'm like a child again. <laughs> okay, go down. So you've got to go right, left, right, left, right, left. the opposite. Well, that's right. Right, left, right, left. Yes, it works. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to Life on the Hulls. A couple of weeks ago, I started to fit a freezer unit on the starboard side of my catamaran hull. Now, it required a little bit of templating and I find that if I make an MDF template of each item, I'm able to then see the physical uh, structure of the boat and really start to work out how everything's going to fit in place. This week, I'm gonna concentrate on the rear starboard cabin and start to work on the wardrobes and, uh, and, and in fact, the bed base that's going to form the rear cabin. And uh, it's a pretty good visual representation of how this boat's going to be. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. Right, I'm gonna cut a door in this midsection partition wall here. Now this actually feeds into the rear starboard cabin. So I need a door in there because what I need to do now is I need to work out where this guy needs to be cut off and then have a partition wall that joins onto the back wall of the deck module. So I've got a lot of uh, work to be done in here and a lot of it's gonna be MDF templating and, and then ultimately foam core. So I don't know whether you can notice, but in the background there, you'll notice that the air is quite hazy. We had around about eight to nine weeks of uh, lingering smoke in the air for the whole of summer effectively. And uh, it wasn't until early or around about the mid-February before we started getting blue skies again. And that's very unusual for us here in Australia. We usually have blue skies every day, but uh, that smoke was pervasive. And in fact, they actually uh, said it was equivalent to smoking two packets a day. Uh, the air quality was that bad in our region. So uh, yeah, it wasn't a good scene at all. Um, I now need to trim this bulkhead and I've just worked out that this is a line here because there's actually a solid wall that goes from here right to the back template. So it actually extends from the edge of this module all the way to the, the back template there. So I've got to go and cut this edge off here and I've worked that out. I've actually spirit leveled that in and plumbed that in and then there'll be an intersecting foam panel all the way across there that then intersects with the, uh, with the, the galley module. So it's a, a pretty concise cut that one and I've always known that I've had to do it so I may as well get it done and then I can line up this other panel that actually intersects along the wall here. All right, so I'm just using these small angled cleats here just to hold pieces in place so I can start to get a bit of a picture on how this robe section is going to be. This is actually the back of the galley. Um, the galley actually forms across here and back over here. So there's a floor section that needs to go in here. I can pretty much cut all these. I have enough um, of the floor or the sole section to make this cabinet here. And then I can start to think about what's gonna go in underneath here. So really good to get some structure in here again. Uh, it's been a while since I've had this sort of uh, room to play with, but yeah, essentially the large rear cabin here is actually quite big. I'm down in the uh, stern section of the cat on the starboard side and I've already started to form the rear cabin. You can see here where there's a door here and a robe and then a, a bedside table template. I'm basically templating everything out of MDF so when it comes to the foam sheets, I can just simply lay it over the top and cut it once and know that there's not gonna be any errors. Very, very accurate uh, stage of the boat here. What I'm doing now is I'm basically going to determine the bed height 
uh, for the rear starboard uh, double sweep. And they are actually uh, uh, sideways. They're not a lengthways berth. They are a sideways berth that goes from the outer hull to the chamfer panel. And it's a full double bed. And I'll just show you a photo of it now and you can see what I'm sort of aiming for. Um, I've made this last engine bay bulkhead here. It's actually at the right height. So what I need to do now is draw a line along here to work out a large cleat to be able to put there so that I can start to form the base of that. Now I'm not gonna be able to glass these in because I need to get the engine in before I actually install this. Now, it would be nice to think that I could actually put it through the hole in the, um, in the bed. I'm gonna have a, a, a hood that opens up on gas struts so I can access the engine from within the boat as well as from the stern of the boat as well. So I intend to have dual access to all parts of the engine and to be able to in fact get into the engine bay and walk around in there or at least move around in there. It's not quite big enough for me to stand up in but it is certainly big enough for me to get in. But I'm gonna determine this, uh, this level here, start to work on gluing some cleats in and then glassing them in place so that I can at least make the base that I'm just gonna basically prefab in the factory there. I'll lay out the foam, I'll do it out of 30 mil foam because there's gonna be a bed base. I don't want any springiness for all that bouncing up and down that happens in a boat, particularly when you're on a passage, but certainly even more so for uh, active members of my crew that, uh, that like to um, you know, use a bed for other purposes. Right, so that's dead level, and uh, this is going to be the end of the bunk right here. So what I need to do is I need to put in some form of a cleat here that is actually horizontal or dead level. Okay, so you're at the stern of the boat around where the sugar soup scoops start. And uh, this part here is going to be the height of our bed base. Um, I'm just gonna sort of wedge that eggs. It's not an exact fit, but it's pretty close. And uh, running the spur all over the top of that. You know, once again, it's almost spot on. So I sort of had a bit of a win there. It's pretty rudimentary, but what it's going to be, this wall will actually extend up here and then the rear of the deck will actually intersect with it. So I don't want to make any part here. What I just need to work out is where these cleats need to end. And um, I'll sit this panel back in place. Go. And pretty much that's now showing my, my uh, rear bed base, which is going to have a large cleat along here and another one along here, giving me that uh, that strong support here. Now, remembering that the engine is right here, so I need a large opening here, which is going to be around about probably about a third of the bed base is going to be a giant hood that can open up on gas struts for access through the. Uh, through the bed into the engine for servicing, obviously, and, uh, and a number of other things. Now, the other thing I don't want to do is I don't want this protruding too far down because I need to be able to access underneath. So this is likely to be a, an eye beam or a very, very rigid structure, possibly foam core with a number of layers on each side and a smaller beam around that big with some subsequent bracing as well so that I've got good, clear access from the sugar scoops where you guys are standing in underneath to every component of my engine. So who'd have thought a boat would be held together with a hot glue gun? These are the most useful things, mate. I've used this on every component of this boat. I've gone through hundreds of dollars worth of hot glue, but it holds stuff in place until you get around to it. So I'm gonna basically secure this, uh, this template in place. Like so. 
So all the cleats that I'm using on the walls for uh, suspending the bed and anywhere where I'm going, intending to put shelving and things like that, I'm going to use pre-laminated 20 mil foam core. I have plenty of off cuts that are going to uh, certainly suffice for for this. Uh, the table saw eats through it pretty quickly, and uh, and the nice thing about it is that once again I'm I'm using minimal wood in this boat where there's chance of rotting, etc. Right, so I'm going to glue this in place with the um, methacryl, that, that technic glue that I've been using on all of the cleats and everything. So the idea of that is it's going to hold it in place as secure as ever. But what I'll do then is just to add a little bit more security, I'm going to actually physically uh, tab it to the hull as well because it's going to have a, quite a lot of weight on this. And as, although it's going to be supported all the way around the perimeter of the bed, I am concerned um, you know, with, with rough seas and the like and beds moving up and down as they tend to do, um, I'm gonna have a lot of pressure on it. So, so I'll tap it in place here, and tack it in place with a couple of soft tappers just to make sure that it stays. And, oh, Jesus, every time I say that, it moves. <laughs> Take 45. I'll tack it in place with a few soft tappers and that'll make sure that it stays here. concerned it may not be enough of a ledge to sit a bed frame on because that bed frame is going to sit right over the top here uh, so I may even put some extra cleats on here just to, to give me something else to tab to or to screw to um, or glue to in the event of uh, you know it not being strong enough but I think for now that's a, a really good solution it's given me a, a really good platform with which to cut my shape and get it all exactly right and then i can prefab it in the factory just bring it in and sit it in in one piece once i get the engines in place and then down in the starboard side as well so you go from one side to the other but at least you're consistent <laughs> it does have a bit of consistency to the whole thing. Okay. okay so we've got that cleat in place that's now the double bed frame uh, position and then on the port side so we've got the bedside table here and then we've got another bed frame here uh, ready to go I basically cut the other piece of blocking here and that'll give me the ability to be able to get that uh, get that floor of that bed or that bed base uh, laminated together next week and then I'll have that part made as well Right, so we've worked at this cleat. This is actually at a 45 degree angle because the chamfer panel is at a 45 degree angle. This cleat, um, I'll just screw in place here for now, and that'll give me the basis for the bed bunk. At uh, least let me uh, work out the transverse size of the foam sheets that are going to sit on here. And I'll mount a couple of screws into the foam just to hold it in place so I can get on the measurements right. Okay, so the bed bases are going to be a 30 mil foam with one layer of 300, two layers of 600 because they need to be quite solid because they're going to have a, uh, such a large span. It's almost a two meter span. It's the size of a double bed, so 1.9 uh, long and uh, 1.38 meters wide or 1,380 mils wide. So quite a considerable span. There is going to be some reinforcement on it. We're going to use the 30 mil foam. I've got plenty of that left over from the, uh, the original hull build. So I'm going to use those sheets. You can see those are quite thick and, uh, and they'll be the perfect thickness for um, such an expanse. And that's essentially going to sit there. Okay, so I've now cut this board. Short of having a little rebate, it should fit perfectly. Anyways. All right, I'm going to cut that sheet. 
get it in place. And then what I'm going to be able to do, I'm going to uh, take it into the factory there, set it on the flat sheet, and laminate it all in one piece. So this, this will be one solid um, 30 mil uh, cord bed piece. And we'll hopefully it's right. Yeah. Have you filmed the rest? Yeah, yeah, all good. I've just got to remember that I've had to allow an extra centimetre for that cutout there. To move it forward, yeah. So I need to move it up into that bedside table. Righto. Yeah, it's cool. Righto. Got a bit of overhang there, mate. Let's go to bed, buddy. Go to overhang. No, that's okay. You have one bed and I'll have the other one. That's okay. One. You go to that one on that side, and that way we won't have to smell each other. And when will the girls come in? <laughs> yes, well, that's the, that's the million dollar question, my friend. All right. Hey. All right, so this is the rear port side, bedside table over here. And uh, you can see the sort of engine access I'm gonna have underneath there. The engine's only about 70 high, so it's not that high, 700 mils high. And then over on the, uh, the, the starboard side, we've got our double bed base here, so it's pretty cool. What do you reckon, mate? Going into your cabin, eh? Going downstairs, mate. I'm Come on in. The, looking for the fridge. Looking for the fridge, looking for the beer. Where's the fridge? <laughs> Yeah, you could probably even sit on the edge of that bed, I reckon. There you go, have a sit on the bed. You reckon? Yeah, just sit right on the edge. Right on the edge, very edge. Oh, look at that. Yeah, Solid yeah, as that. a rock. There you go, Brilliant. right down the alleyway. Stay All right, so walking through from the forward cabin again. We've got Johnny sitting on the bed there, waiting anxiously for the joy, for the passage. Very good. It's classic, eh? That's terrific. Yeah, that's good. It's good to have all the structure there. That's so plenty of room for a bedside cabinet. Yeah, it's got to be higher though. It's got to be higher than the... Up to here. Yeah, about another eight inches higher, I reckon. Okay. Yeah. Plenty of room. Yeah, cool. Fantastic. Thank you, mate. Thanks for your help. Mate, I don't do anything. <laughs> I just um, you do enough, give you mate. the shits. That's the way. That's what I like. I'm escaping from the wife. <laughs> so I'm down here on Husky Wharf. This is our home wharf. And... Uh, I'm waiting for Ron to come in. He's just anchored up out there. He motored down from Sydney and sailed down from Sydney yesterday. It took him about 10 hours from the southern reaches of Sydney. He got hit by a uh, 50 knot westerly gust last night while he was on the anchor in a monster storm. I mean, it was a huge storm. So it's going to be very interesting uh, to hear his stories. And he's a bit tired, so it could be a bit of a cranky bugger today. But anyway, he's on his way. He's about to come in and uh, collect me off the wharf here. And I'm going to chuck a whole heap of stuff on. I've got some cardboard. I've got my uh, my little um, shape making jig that I bought on Facebook, and uh, and we'll be able to get at least get a start on getting some measurements for the the template for this uh, for this Targa infill. So he'll be in in a moment. I'm looking forward to meeting him again. I haven't seen him for a couple of months. So Ron's Seawind 1160 is one of the original Seawind 1160s from uh, Australia and it had a centre targa which is actually a solid piece of, uh, of glass and two canvas infills, one on either side and uh, when you're up there on the coach house roof trying to pack away the mainsail and, uh, and deal with any issues you may have up there, it gets a bit precarious because of the canvas. You can't certainly walk on that canvas infill so I offered about a year ago when I was out sailing with Ron to um, fabricate a couple for him. Uh, although they are commercially available, I thought it would be a great project. And what I've done is I've recorded the entire process from uh, basically foam flat sheet right through to fitting it and it's going to be available up on the composite shop as time goes on so don't forget to click over to the composite shop uh, YouTube channel and subscribe there I'm going to have all manner of projects on there into the future including kayaks and things like this and anything that comes across our door and it's a pretty exciting project for me because I get to do stuff that is quite bespoke custom and there's a lot of pretty uh, good technique in that making these items such as kerfing foam etc and uh, and and pretty much right down to fairing fabricating and painting so don't uh, don't hesitate to jump over there it is going great absolutely great guns I've had over a thousand subscribers over the last uh, week and and the views are certainly getting up there because it is more general interest and I'm really wrapped and, and excited about this process and progress so don't forget uh, to like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and uh, and you'll see um, as I go forward with both of the channels, uh, plenty of info coming forward. I really love the videoing and I love the editing process and I'm really enjoying the engagement with you guys. And, and if you haven't watched uh, the Composite Shop channel, please go there now. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time on Life on the Hulls.